go. Hi. That's a beautiful flag. That's really a beautiful flag, actually. So, how are you doing? Thank you. I'm, I'm great. I, I, I really am amazed by uh, Lisbon, by Portugal, by all Portuguese people. Oh, thank you very much. It's your first time in here. Uh, every, everybody is so nice. So everybody smiling. Uh, I love it. Oh, and you just arrived. Prepare yourself because you are. Oh, get the flag. Because you are really beautiful. You know that. Oh, thank you. No, you are. <laughs> you, have, uh, you have an opera a singer, a soprano. Yes, I'm coloratura soprano. I don't want to get you Do you remember when did you fall in love with opera? I think uh, that it happened when I was uh, 13 years old. 30? Yeah, my mom said, you cannot live without any goals. You have to set a goal. Who would you like to be? Yeah. And I wasn't sleeping for months. I was thinking what I love to do the most. I understood that I love to sing, I love music. And then I saw L'Opera Traviata. La Traviata? Yes, La Traviata, where it was Anna Netrebka singing. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love and I thought, this is the thing I would like to do for the whole of my life. Thank God you did. My favorite is La Bohème from Puccini. We said that once. Yes, yes. Yeah. I Sing love it. I really love the stars. There is something powerful, something mystical uh, up there in the sky, and I really love that. And also, I, I was crazy about all this uh, roller. Uh, how, how do you say? Roller yeah, here. roller coasters yeah. and everything. And I thought, how nice! I saw a documentary, yeah. and uh, all the astronauts can do roller coasters and everything. These crazy things, yeah, free, for free. free. <laughs> To be an astronaut, you can come to Lisbon, to Eurovision, perform on, uh, on Eurovision stage. And um, actually, now your biggest dream is to perform opera on the largest uh, stages uh, in the world. If you had to choose one, just one stage, what stage would you choose? I think my favorite now is Met Opera, oh, yeah? Metropolitan Opera in New York. And what princess would you be on that stage? Because, as a matter of fact, I know you love the wonderful world. Of the of Disney's princesses. Yes. Yeah, what is your favorite one? I think Pocahontas is my favorite. Pocahontas. One. Why? Yeah. <laughs> because uh, she's independent, she's free, she's wise, and she understands the nature. She's so um, caring about nature. That's true. That's so, true. I thought you were going to say Cinderella because of the dress. <laughs> you know what? You know where I'm going, don't you? Yeah. The dress. I can, I can the dress. Actually, on, yeah. this Sorry, is a skirt. Yes. What? This is a skirt, not a dress. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, very, 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 very. Now oh, you got me. You're good. You're good. Tell us the true story about the dress, because there was the dress, then there was not a dress, then you had the dress, then you know. uh, Yeah, actually, um, we, we made this uh, thing because, as with song La Forza, uh, electronic sounds and operatic vocal. So same with the dress, long dress, as in opera, but with electronics on it. Yeah, and uh, we would, we wanted to show uh, this in your vision, but then we got to know how much we have to pay for it's that. It's all about the money. Yeah, it's all about the money. And uh, but thanks to all supporters in Estonia, we are now here with this skirt. Uh, the mini skirt, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, as an artist, as a performer, as a singer, do you think, and uh, I don't know if I'm, but I'm, I will try to explain, do you think that if you didn't have that dress, that would af affect your performance? You think, you think that you would feel, you wouldn't feel the song in the same way? You, you think no. the way you dress on stage 
uh, affects the, the performance, the way you sing, the, the way you deliver your song? Actually, no, it doesn't affect my singing and how I'm delivering because I'm singing from my heart and when I don't have a dress, that doesn't mean I don't have my heart and my soul. Of course, I hope. It's, it's always there, so the dress only helps to deliver the message and to amplify it, but it doesn't affect. The one is uh, is Tilal. Is Tilal? Yeah. Yes. We are very happy to have you here. I have lots of questions to ask, but I don't have more time because it's their time now. Who wants to ask the first question? <laughs> yes, with a white shirt, tie, colorful. Hi there. Hello. Hello, Lina. Russia, is Rus, Anton Samsonov. Ni slovo prostiti ne budu. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> no oh. matter. Okay. <laughs> Subtitles, please. So um, the question will be about Estonian uh, uh, school of opera singing. Tell us about your Estonian teachers of opera. Uh, I have an, a wonderful teacher, Eda Zaharova, and uh, she's uh, the teacher who, with who I started really to sing. I think it happened. Uh, we met nine years ago. So and this whole time we were working together and uh, rehearsing almost every day. Every day? Almost, yeah, sometimes on Sundays we had a okay. break. <laughs> so uh, she's a really wonderful person and she's, now she's more not like a teacher, she's more like a, like a partner, like a stage partner for me. She, she's amazing, so I'm really thankful that I met Family her. already almost. Yeah, she's my music mother. <laughs> That's good. Next. With the green, uh, it's green, isn't it? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Michael, and I'm from EurovisionMongaria.com. Uh, people may know that it's very hard to sing opera, and people may think that your voice is gets tired of being singing that much. Is it true? And what do you do to protect your voice? Actually, I'm really happy that I have such a good training behind my back and that's uh, the opera singing is uh, very similar to really to real hard sport. If you're very well trained, then if you have to run a marathon, you don't get so tired. But, yeah, it's all about the training and also um, as a sport uh, people, they have to uh, Warm up. They, yeah, they have to warm up and they have to live a certain lifestyle, yeah. like uh, eat right things, uh, have rest sometimes, sleep well. So the same is with the voice. I just have to sleep well, eat the right things, and uh, be positive, happy, and um, sometimes I have to be quiet, not to tire my voice too much, and then everything is very good and fine. Let's all try to sleep well, eat well, and have your voice. Uh, that side, over there, with that green, blue. Oh, what's happening with me and the colors? Uh, Mikhail Kesarev, MusicNews.com, uh, Russia. Добрый uh, вечер, good evening, Terra Ixtost, Buonasera. Just a question. Uh, how many languages do you speak? And which languages? Uh, once more. How many languages do you speak? Oh, how many languages? Um, I love languages. I really love uh, learning of languages, and I speak uh, Estonian, Russian, uh, English, uh, French, uh, a little bit. Oui, je parle français. Oui, très bien. Oui, je te dis le lycée français de Tallinn. Oh ouais. Ouais. And um, I speak uh, Italian. Je parle italien. Ah, okay. Oh, but, yeah. And also, I speak a little bit of German. I mean, I understand better than I speak, uh, but... What part do you want to know in Portuguese and I teach you? Um, and actually, I started to learn Portuguese cool. in a Duolingo application. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, and actually, I learned uh, three years Japanese. Japanese? Yeah. Oh, that's great. But I cannot remember anything anymore. Sushi. <laughs> oh. Sushi. A sushi. Sushi, yeah. sushi, it's a very nice one. So, over here. Yeah, it's you, it's you. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Hey, I'm Farouk from France, from Paris. Oh, bonjour! Um, yeah. I'm from Cocorico Vision magazine. And uh, you've, you said that uh, you like Pocahontas. I'm sure that you know the 
famous song of Pocahontas, <laughs> yeah. Color of the Wind. Yeah. Could you maybe sing a little bit of it? Okay. <laughs> you think I'm a neighbor and savage, and you've been so many places, I guess it must be so. But still I cannot see if the savage one is me. How much there is that you don't know, you don't know. Oh, great! Thank you! That was a very good one. This side. Hello, Lina. It's JP from Radio International. Uh, you co-wrote the lyrics for La Forza. Can you tell me what was the animation to write the song? And was it written especially for the Eurovision Song Contest? And when did you start writing the song? Um, the song actually was just written because uh, we had an idea to uh, do something special because uh, nobody in Estonia does this uh, crossover thing. Uh, and uh, uh, there happened to be uh, a still uh, competition, yeah. which is national uh, selecti selection for Eurovision Song Contest, and uh, we thought, yeah, let's try to send it. Anyway, we're going to continue with this project. If it if it goes through, very well. If not, we'll continue. And that's how I happen to be here. <laughs> I love this you love. One this year, you can host it last year. Is that true? Mm -hmm. You co-hosted the show. Yes, yes, I was uh, co-hosting. Uh, How did that happen? Um, Mark Normet, who is sitting right there, uh, he Hello. called me and uh, asked uh, if I'm interested to try something new to host uh, the most popular uh, <laughs> program in Estonia. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting, I've never done it, but let's try it. The biggest show in Estonia, okay, let's try it. <laughs> you like it, you enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it, actually. The first, uh, the first time, I was so nervous, and the whole energy went to maintain like, <laughs> my weight and my face said, oh, I'm so relaxed, I feel so very well. <laughs> and I was so tired after that, like crazy. But the second one, I actually really started to enjoy that, so. That's yeah. Uh, in the press, in the first video, really, I was very nervous. I'm still very nervous. So Aww, I really want don't to, be. You have to teach me. <laughs> now, now, with the blue shirt, t shirt, shirt now. Okay, what's wrong with me? <laughs> uh, no, no, I didn't have any. <laughs> Hi, hello, welcome. Hi, um, Andrew Webster from RTV Slovenia and ESCCAS.com. Um, two quick questions, if it's okay. Uh, first one We all see the dress on the stage. What's it like having it underneath you? Does it dazzle you or distract you? And then my other quick question was your favorite opera singers. Um, who are they? Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, no, the dress uh, is not distracting me. I really love the projection because um, we have worked on that after uh, winning uh, AC Lowell. And uh, it really tells the story, what is happening on the stage. Uh, the girl, who is singing it? Me. Uh, at, at first, um, I, I really don't understand what, what is going on. There's something like I'm really iced, like an ice princess. And then something begins uh, to happen in my soul, and then all the ice goes away, and uh, my soul starts burning with real love. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. that's Yes, and uh, I think this projection helps to to yes. tell the story and um, about my favorite opera singers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are so many of them. Uh, but I think uh, one of uh, my favorite one is Anna Metrevko because uh, she was the one who really impressed me so much um, when I was uh, younger. And that's why I started to learn uh, operatic singing. Mm, inspired you. Yeah, she is my inspiration. And also there are many young singers, for example, Nadine Sierra, a great soprano, American. She is always such an inspiration. Even when sometimes I have, um, I feel a little bit down, I watch her singing and I'm like, oh yeah, opera is a great thing. And also all these uh, famous divas, uh, Maria Callas, Monserrat Caballé, and everybody else. So they're, uh, 
I think uh, we have to. We would have to sit here. The whole, all women <laughs> who would like to hear <laughs> about. We don't have time. Actually, we yes. just have time for one more question. Um, yes, sir. Sorry. I promise next time. I'll, I'll, it's very difficult. I promise. You. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome from ESC in Norway. I wonder, have you had any nightmares that you stand there in your big skirt and thinking, oh, I have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> I, think I, I think I can manage with my uh, body so well that I can wait quite time yeah. and not to be distracted by this. <laughs> so you are doing pretty well in the batting odds. Uh, last you. year, lost in Verona, got lost somewhere in the semi-final, didn't qualify. Uh, what are your expectations? Uh, about this betting, I'm really thankful that people are believing in me, that uh, they're counting on me, and I'm really thankful about that. But um, everything will happen on the stage, and we will see the results only on the stage. And um, for, from me, I would do the best I can to, do the, to deliver this great message of love and to, to touch the souls and hearts of people because we have to speak more about love. Not, I mean, I, I don't mean like this, oh, the passion of love. I mean the love for nature, the love for mother, the love for father, uh, all these kinds of love we have all experienced at least one time in our life. And we have to talk more about that, because there, happen there are happening really sad things in our world, really. And the love is curing us all and our world, so... Elena, you are not just beautiful, you are a beautiful person. It was very nice to meet you, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Elena from Estonia! Thank you so much! Thank you!